Welcome everybody. Phil Beckwith, the professional painter and decorator. And at long last, at long last I'm gonna say, at long last I am actually trying the Zinza. You've seen the thumbnail. I'm trying the Zinza Ben Aqua. Now, I don't wanna say that nobody's reached out to me because nobody has reached out to me. I've had to purchase this. I'm clearly not enough of an influencer on the internet and social media to get a sample tin sent to me, hence why it's taken so long for me to um, actually get my hands on this and um, use it actually on a job. That said, I'm not bitter at all. Far from bitter, but I am on a job that actually requires something at least as good as what this is, hopefully. Now, you can probably see behind me what the problems are or were. We got painted doors. Now, these over the years have just had a few coats of paint on, they weren't heavily painted. And when it came to cleaning them down, they were shelling off and we call it gloss on gloss. It just peeled off. That door there was terrible. That door there wasn't quite as terrible, but I could literally get a scraper blade on and peel that off. What you can still see on there is tight, but they've all had a murka over them. They've had 80 grit murka with a Deros, Daros, both of those. And this one, I actually went to a 40 grit and that went straight off and then I finished off with, a, with actually an 80. So we haven't got big scratch marks. So we've actually gone down to bare wood with knots in it. Now I need a primer that's going to sort out the bare wood, stop any tanning possibly, but at least hold back the knots. Now you've seen that video there. Yeah, have a look at that video there. There's three main things that stop knots. And then if we do a side note of this four, hopefully a water-based knot blocker should, should stop them as well. But what, what we're gonna do is I'm spraying today and I'll show you this spray equipment that's coming out. I'm gonna be spraying Aquabin. Yes, spraying. Not having my sprayer out for a bit, so let's, let's get it out on this job. Now the process we've got, we're gonna be priming it with the aqua bin. I'm gonna be giving it two coats. Now a lot of confusion when people are doing primer coats and even using bin, red bin. They're putting too thick a coat on in one go, trying to get it to cover. You're always better to do two thinner coats than one thick. So what I'm gonna be doing is getting this on quite quickly so it's not a heavy coat, to be light wafts, let it to dry and give it at least two hours before your second coat. And that's where people go wrong. You need to be giving enough drying time. Give it at least two hours before you get your second coat on. I know it's a ball ache, but if you want to do it right without any problems, do it correctly. So I'll be doing two light coats today. Then when I come back tomorrow, I'll be finishing off my little bits of filling up and corking around the edges and the finish that we're going for is Farrow and Ball Gloss. So it'll have the correct light tones primer undercoat on, then it'll have two top coats and this will all be sprayed. Right, but the problems we've got with this peeling paint. Right, if in doubt, pick up a phone and speak to a paint rep. Now, my paint rep for the East Midlands is Bruce Kennedy. I'm gonna give a shout out to Bruce Kennedy because I sent him some photos last week, told him what I was planning on doing. I wanted to use this. I've told him I've got a tin of this, but the apprehensions that I'd got, and obviously he knows how bad it is. We've got to put something on there to stop the paint coming off. So after speaking to Bruce and explain what my process was, he agreed, and I'm gonna come onto the process in a minute, but he also mentioned another product to use before I go on with the aqua bin. So let me just tell you what the process is that I've actually done with these doors. Moved you around. Right, these clearly have been a pine door that over the years has probably been a waxed finished door and somebody's painted over them. Right, that's why it's come off. It's come off dead easy. There's not been a proper preparation. There's not been a proper adhesion primer on and that's why it's peeled. So if you don't know, if you've got a waxy surface, methylated spirits. 
So I told Bruce what I was going to do. I was going to clean it all down with methylated spirit first, just to try and get any last traces of wax off that surface. And that's what I've done. This morning, I've gone around everything and I've literally all over. And you're going to say to me, Phil, why are you using methylated spirit and not white spirit? Main thing is methylated spirit does soften up wax. It's a thinning agent for wax, which is great. But also with it being that spirit based and alcohol based, it evaporates and it doesn't leave really anything back left on the surface. Whereas if you used white spirit, that's quite an oily, thinner, because obviously if you don't know, well, Google it, there's an oil trace to actually white spirit and that could leave a trace on that surface. So that's why I've gone with Met. It dries quickly because it evaporates away because it's an alcohol based spirit, like spirit alcohol. Um, denatured alcohol, if you don't know. Cleaner. So we've gone over that and I've cleaned them all down and I'm happy with that. Now, the thing that Bruce mentioned to me, which makes, stands to reason, is using this product. Peel stop. So Bruce said to me, Phil, where you've got these, let's bring you around, where you've got edges that are peeled and just round there, use some peel stop on it, scrub it out, and that's what I've done. I've gone around this morning, any of the main edges that could be possibly a problematic edge that might peel back up, I've scrubbed over with a brush and my peel stop just to go around. I've not gone priming all of it, I've just gone round all the areas that could be problematic with peeling paint. And this is a binder and a sealer for peeling paint. So hopefully, these have been done a couple of hours, three hours, that's all nicely dry, and now I'm actually ready to go with spraying aqua bin. But, I've not just used it on this. If you can see, the picture around the top is also quite flaky, peely. I've gone around all of that, and if I bring it back to here, if you can hear that noise, it's the heater. It's got a heater blowing to keep the air warm. That cabinet in the corner, that was sanded with the mercury as well. And that, I've gone over all those edges that are starting to be bare with the peel stop. And hopefully, because that's been a good few hours, that'll hold off. The other thing I want to mention, Products are probably in the product list down below in the description if you want to purchase anything using my Amazon Associates. That's why you see a paper motion in the corner. I'm not sponsored. That glass, I've gone over it with, this is great stuff. It's the H2O uh, liquid masking and it's, you know, it's well for strong. Now, what I've done with that, I've cleaned off all the edges from any paint that was on the glass. I've clearly sanded it all down. And then I've just gone over with two coats of this over the glass and you can just see it goes clear and just a bit lower down there. You can see it's just drying off. So that's a good product to use on glass. And when I spray, I'll go straight onto that and then it will um, peel off when it's all dry. So all in all, I'm quite happy. We've sanded stuff down with methylated spirit to get any wax off. I've gone over certain areas with peel stop around the picture rail and areas like that and I'm now ready to get the sprayer going to spray these and you're going to say to me Phil yeah but you're spraying in an empty house I'm far from an empty house this is quite a big country mansion probably not so, so much a mansion but it's a big house in the country so it could be yeah in there is the hallway that room there is the kitchen what I've done I've got tape on the floor, I've got sheets on the other side to stop any draft pulling any dust from the spraying through. The window, I've bagged over, and when I go down that end, I'll just show you what I've done with that. But we are in an occupied house. Occupied house. The carpet has come up because they're going to be having a, a wooden floor fitted, so it's an ideal opportunity to actually get the sprayer out to do the woodwork. So um, without further ado, let's move over to that side and let me just show you the sprayer. Right, so hopefully you can see, I've got the Graco ST Max 2. It's a 495 PC Pro. And I'm actually using the contractor gun as well. You're asking me about the gun, aren't you? In that corner, if you have a look, there's some more information on using that sprayer, uh, unboxing it and actually first time using it. It's 
actually a really nice bit of kit. It's expensive, but you get what you pay for. You know what I always say, quality remembered long after price is forgot. Back to the gun. I've got a blue filter in there, which is the fine mesh filter. Actually in the machine, I'm still using the black, more coarser filter. That's not so fine. I'm quite happy using that. I'm actually going to be using the paint neat because I'm using airless. I can spray it neat. I don't need to thin it down. I'm using a gray coat. This is, I'll say a bedded in one. It's not a brand new tip. When I come to actually spray the finish, I'll be using a brand new spray tip and seating housing. Yeah, clearly I will be, maybe, hopefully. But I've got a 310, which is three double up to give me a six inch fan pattern. And the 10 is 0.10 orifice size. And I've told you about the size. Please watch that video about orifices and tip sizes. That's a bit more in depth than me just telling you now. But a 0.10, if you were spraying emulsion, you probably look at 0 0.17, 0 I spray at 0.15s, 0.16s thin down, thicker paint should be probably at 19, but this is a 0.10. Maybe I will try, when I do my final coat, to try and spray with a 308 or possibly a, a 208. 208 might be a little bit small on the fan pattern, but I'll see if I can drop down from a 0.10 to a 0.08, because that will put a less amount of paint on, and I can probably more, if I call it waft, it's probably the wrong word to say, but I could probably put a finer coat on for the finished coat. So that's where we are. I've got 310 blue filter on a lovely gun and I'm spraying. You're going to say, what, what pressure are you spraying at? I'm going to be looking at 1,000, 1,100, 1,200. As long as I haven't got tails, I want to be spraying at a low pressure. So hopefully about 1,100. I'll have a look on the machine, see what I've got. It's just over 1,000. And if I forget, I haven't got the mask on. Let me just turn it. Let me just do this. Bit of a sample on that window, bagging, and can you hear it? You can't hear anything, can you? It's lovely. Uh, no tails on that, and that's just over a thousand PSI, spray neat paint. That's the reason I've used the airless and not using my HVLP, which will give me a nice fine finish, but you do have to thin the, I can say it, thin the paint down a little bit more. But that said, both systems work well. It's just, just the suit you need. And yes, I have got my mask. This is the mass, this is the Sunstrom uh, SR100. Just put a lock on the handle so I don't spray myself. Put that in. Don't forget, I've told you about spraying. Make sure we put some Vaseline around the threads of the pipes and everything, just the threads, only the threads. Um, this spray mask I've had since the early 90s. Clearly I've had new filters and I've just put a new pre-filter on this morning, which is there, that's the pre-filter. That goes on there. There's a particle filter there that there is no lifespan on those, but you'll probably feel when you need to change it. That I swapped last year. I don't do a lot of spraying, so it's not like I'm using it every day. And that there is, well, they call it a biological filter. Um, there is a playlist, well, a playlist, there is a video there telling you a bit more about the um, cartridges. It's just there. So that takes all the gases out, they call it a gas filter. So it feels like you're actually breathing fresh air. It's not just doing particles and dust, it actually takes the smell out. So that is a lovely mask, details there. So uh, without further ado, do Hugh Parliament McGrew, I'm gonna get a bit of spraying done on there. Right, just before I put the mask on, I'm just gonna tell you about this bagging. I've bagged up the window and you want some airflow from the window. Now, when I've got the bagging on, you know what I mean. Um, run a piece of masking tape just near one of the windows and cut down the masking tape. And that will allow you to get through to the window to open and close it. But the masking tape, I've gone silhouetted, sorry. The masking tape just protects that raw edge of the bagging there. And you can see a little bit there to stop it flapping about and ripping the actual polythene sheet. So that is your top tip Tuesday. Can you see? That will just protect the polythene sheet. And you can see where I've done a little bit of spray practice. No, no tails on that. Right, let's get some spraying. I won't be subjecting you to spraying the whole room. I'll just show you how to do the doors and literally it will be up and down, taking in the frames, 
quickly, I'll be working quickly. You'll be spraying it about 12 inches away from the surface, but move quickly because if you're closer to the surface, you'll be putting more paint on. If you're slow, you'll actually be putting more build up of paint. If you're too fast, you won't be putting enough on. But because I'm gonna be doing two coats today, I'm doing one this morning, one later this afternoon. I don't mind being a little bit quicker. Once I've got these primers on, these will be drying from, well, today, stroke tomorrow, I'll be ready to just nib them down, do any filling up, corking, before I put any undercoat on of the farron ball. Always, I'm gonna say, don't wanna tell your grandmother how to suck eggs, always do your corking and filling once you've got a primer coat on. And if you don't know, it's because your fillers and your primers, your fillers and your corks can soak into the surface if it's bare and drain, I'll say drain out, drain out all the moisture of those um, fillers and corks into the, into the substrate. Whereas if you've already got a primer coat on, that will hold that off and it won't crack and fall out as quick and as easy. Always have a bit of a dump bucket with you. In case your tip or your nozzle just blocks, you can rotate the tip round and just spray it straight into a bucket so you're not gonna get it all over your walls or anything like that. Another top tip, and that's top tip Wednesday. moved around did you see me spraying at about 12 inch you do a 50 50 overlap if you've not seen previous videos of spraying 50 50 overlap so you get a nice coverage i work quite quickly if you could hear the pump could you hear how smooth that was just going you probably actually hear more of the fan blowing keeping the air warm I've had the fan blower on because one, it'll dry everything and my tin of paint that was on the van overnight, I brought it in this morning, got it in front of the fan blower heat just to warm it. It's always nice if you can use warm paint and if anybody wants to sponsor me with some heated hoses, that'd be lovely. I've not got two grand to chuck uh, heated hoses so we'll have to do with a 1999 blower heater just to warm the paint. But all in all, that's gone on quite nicely. Uh, I'll say coverage stroke capacity over the creamy white looking, we're looking good. We can see some staining coming through on that because it was only a thin coat. Hopefully that will hold the tanning off when it's had two more coats. And all in all, I'm quite liking it. So fingers crossed this bin, which is supposed to do everything under the sun. Advanced water-based, primer sealer, stain killer, and odor blocker. We've got no smells in here. And it's effectively, um, effectively blocks odors, seals knots, and sap streaks. I thought that said streaks. I didn't want to read streaker, streaks. Um, touch dry in 25 minutes, recoat time 45. I'm gonna give it a couple of hours before I'm recoating this with a spray again, just to get it built up. But hopefully this, let me put it down, it's a bit heavy. This will do what I need it to do. Hold off those knots, hold off any tanning through of that pine and it should do. And people are gonna say, why didn't you use BIM bin, which is the methylated spirit based shellac based product. I didn't wanna use that because I wanted to do everything water-based. One, two, three, Zinza one, two, three, doesn't do knots. One, two, three plus, is better than one, two, three because it will hold off water stains, but it doesn't do knots. Bin is ideal, but it stinks, and I don't want to wreck my sprayer. We're using bin on it. Not that it's a problem to clean out because you just use methylated spirit, but I don't want to be using a load of methylated spirit. Hopefully, all the others could be done away with if this is as good as what they say it is. We'll see. But Right, I'll speak to you this afternoon when I've got two coats on, it's drying. So, see you in a bit. Right, hope you can hear me over the 
sound of the blow heater. It's been a good couple of hours um, since we first sprayed these. I came back after lunch, did a bit of painting of some edges. I'll tell you about that in a minute. But that, because it was bare wood, it furred up. We call it popping the grain. So all I've done is I've got a fine Goldflex Merca pad. This is a 150 and I've literally just nibbed that down because it was very furry because we'd sanded it down to bare wood. So what I've done, I've sanded those just with the fine 150 gold flex. Anything on these as well that just felt a little bit furry furry and got that down nicely. So what I can do, it'll probably be about the next half an hour to an hour. I'll give it a second coat of the bin. Now you can still see it coming through because it was only a waft. You saw when I did it, it was only really a waft coat. Messages coming in, so popular. Um, it was only just a waft coat. The second coat, I'm hoping it'll just body up a little bit more, but I'm not too worried because after that second coat of the BIN bin Aqua, it's going to have an undercoat, Farron Ball undercoat light tones and two top coats of uh, Farron Ball gloss. So when I come tomorrow, this coat, the second coat will be dry. That's when I'll go around beading, corking up and making everything look nice and um, presentable for a coat of undercoat and then give it another nib down and build up with my coats, um, coats of paint. So all in all, that is really good. But what I wanted to touch on before I get spraying again, people are gonna say, what do you do about the edges? If you're taping up all the frame on the inside and outside and however you want to do it, you can spray the frames in. But what I've done, what I've done, I've got just, just in my paint kettle bucket, I've got a nice one and a half inch heritage gnaw brush. And I've literally just gone round, opened the doors and <whistles> painted the edges in. I did one coat before lunch and then, well, just before I turn the camera on, I've gone around with a second coat just to give that the build up. What I will do with the finished coats, I'll do exactly the same. Before I do the final coat of spray as the doors are shut, I'll make sure all the edges are all painted with a brush and that's how you do it. Don't, don't make it more complicated than it needs to be. It's the same with the cabinets in the corner there. I've just gone around all the edges. A lot of them were sprayed in anyway, but just to make sure it was all covered, I've just gone around and just neat, I'll say neatened them all. I've just touched them all in to make sure that they're all um, got a nice coat of paint on it. Same with the door there. I've done exactly the same. Now in time, I will be doing in that room there. So where I would normally say to you, you paint that edge because it's the in opening door. That part of the door frame there because that shuts against it and you leave these inner parts because it's that side of the room i've actually done all the frame with that primer because i know i'll be doing the same sort of system in there so i've rubbed them down and coated it all up at the same time so that's you can do you can do that if you know what you're um, doing in the next room if you're coming back to do it so all in all we're looking quite good i'm just going to give it another I'm just going to give it another 30 minutes before I start spraying again. I'll come back and give you a conclusion when it's dried off and we'll see what it's like for two coats over this. Oh, I don't want to call it pitch pine, but it was a pine door. And hopefully this being an adhesion primer, a stain blocker and also a knot blocker will stand me in good stead for the subsequent coats that go over the top. I'm not talking about those paints, am I? I just want to talk about the bin. I won't be doing a scratch test to it because obviously it's still fresh. You'll probably find that five to seven days it's starting to cure. And I will say to you, the longer the better, but you can't do any more than sand something down and give it a decent adhesion primer coat. And as I said to you a few minutes ago earlier, it's probably two hours since I said it, this sort of stuff, don't overload your paint. Don't try and do one coat to fix all. It's a bit like when you do bare plaster priming. Thinner coats are better than trying to do one thick coat. I've used on that bare plaster primer. It's the bare plaster primer from Screw Fix. 
and it's ideal for new plaster work. It says on the tin, new plaster, bare plaster, whatever it is, but I still thin it down slightly so it soaks in because thinner coats are always better than trying to do one thick coat. And that's probably where a lot of you are going wrong. You're trying to get coverage and opacity in one go and it doesn't work like that. You're better to build up. Okie dokie, it's been a very busy afternoon. I've got that second coat of Aquabin on. Spray beautiful. I've got to say, you get what you pay for, and that 495 ST Max 2 grey coat is brilliant. It's sprayed lovely, and you could just hear the motor was going, it was purring. Now, I'll put a screenshot there if I can, because it's the Bluetooth one, it can go to your phone and tell you what pressure. I was spraying at 1200. So I was actually quite surprised how nice that was spraying at 1200. It's low pressure, it's 1.2 much on. The beauty with that airless and low pressure, I'm not getting clouds of dust. You know when I'm spraying HVLP, that HVLP turbine is just, it searches out all the dust in the room. And if you've got a little bit of bounce back, it doesn't help it, but spraying, doors, three, 10 spray tip, fine finish, that's gone on lovely. Now you saw when I just spoke to you seconds ago, minutes ago, hour or so ago, that first coat onto that bare wood had popped the grain and it was still looking, let's call it tanning, it was still staining through, a bit gingery. Now when it had dried, I just gave it a nib down and the second coat's gone on. I didn't feel, well, clearly it's a lot smoother because it's had a nib down. But that is actually feeling really nice. And to say that's been done the last hour or so, so look at me watch, probably about the last hour, I'm not seeing any staining. I'll call it staining of that ginger of the wood coming through. So fingers crossed, two coats over that pine door is holding off that staining, just like it would say it would, does what it says on the tin. Coming back to what it says on the tin, it's brilliant this is. It's got a label on the side. It tells you the aqua bin, the bullseye one, two, three, the bullseye one, two, three plus, and bin, red bin, and cover stain. It tells you what's excellent, very good, not recommended. I think I can only see two things on here that aren't recommended, and that's flash rusting. You know, when you've got metal work that suddenly gets a bit damp, rusts, it's no good for going over that and wrought iron and iron work, wrought iron, you know, wrought iron railings, metal work, I think that's about it. Wrought iron, cast iron, sorry, wrought iron and cast iron. They're the only two things that it's saying that it's not recommended. There's other things to use on that. That's another video. But so far, so good. This has had its two coats, it's drying off. There's a few little areas on the doors that are just hanging a little bit wet. Not worried about that because I'm coming back tomorrow to um, do the next set of prep. And you're gonna say, Phil, what do you do in this situation? Right, so I had two coats today. I come back tomorrow, I give it a ni nice little nib down with, let me just pick one up from here. Merca Gold Flex again. I go over it all, dust everything down, and then I start doing the fine filling, whether it be caulking around the edges, anything that just wants a little bit of a fine surface from indentation. And I've got, I don't think it's just down there. I've got the isomat, you know, let me just get it. Let me just get it. I've got it. <laughs> it was only back of the camera. I'm just using, not using loads of this. I've got the isomat acrylic. It's the stucco. It's like a fine surface filler. But what I like about this, it dries pretty quick. And because it dries nice, it's not a dry finish. So when you go over it with other paints, it doesn't flash. Well, it shouldn't do, should it? When putting another three or four coats on. But I'm just using anything I'm just using that on anything that I can see that might be just a little bit of an indentation. We're not going mad on it because it's the character of the wood. Well, that's what I'll do tomorrow. Nib, nib stuff down, go around with a bit of cork, go around with a bit of filler. That cork, which you know which one I like, the Red Devil one-time cork, that's gone off enough in about half an hour to an hour, probably less than that and I can get spraying over it because it does set and skin up nicely. The beauty of this is it's an interior exterior cork. It's um, got flexibility. It's got flexibility. I've not had this and I'm gonna to touch wood. 
and one of the reasons we use it, I've not had this craze or crack on me when I've painted over it. All the ones I have. So this is what, I hate the word go-to. This is my go-to cork because I've not had any problems with it. It's brilliant for when you're doing painting over in a short space of time of turnaround times. It's really good. So that's what I'm gonna to do tomorrow. And then I'm not gonna be filming it because this is the video on aqua bin. But tomorrow will be getting a coat of Farrow and Ball light tones undercoat on all of it. That will dry off. Then I'll give it two coats of Farrow and Ball gloss, which might be the day after. But all in all, I'm really impressed with this. Hopefully it's gonna do what it says on the tin with holding those knots off. And if it doesn't, I'll be on to Zinza. And as I say, and I've said before, I'm not sponsored. Nobody's given me a tin of paint and paid me to say how brilliant it is. I'll give you an honest opinion. And if it does start bleeding through and showing stuff, there'll be a video in the future that I'll be saying, this doesn't do what it says on the tin, but hopefully we won't do. And I will give a shout out to Bruce Kennedy because he does support me on a lot of things and gives me some advice, but I've had to buy this and people are saying, where have you got it from? I'm gonna give the girls at the Lady Bay Crown Decorator Centre, a shout out for that because they had a good offer on this. So there was a good price on um, buying this. So all in all, we're all good to go. I'm liking the finish of that at the moment. It's got a nice, I don't want to say silky smooth because that's Chris's catch line, silky smooth. But you know who Chris is, yeah. Um, that is going to be a nice finish for me to build up next subsequent coats of paint. And hopefully, I don't want to do a scratch test on it because it won't be fair to do that. Hopefully, that is going to bind to the surface. It's going to give me that adhesive quality and um, property that I'm needing on that substrate to go forward. It can't be any worse than what it was, can I? I bet them videos are there now, aren't they? So um, all in all, good. See you on the next one. And thanks for watching. A okay, quick shout out to all my subscribers and the people who are pressing. Super thanks. And the people that are buying me, buymeacoffee.com. All in the link below.